All right, guys, today we are going to be, this is going to be part one of a four-part series of first-time applications, everything you need to know. Um, that first video was exceptionally long, so I'm going to break it down. This one is tools, what they are, how they use them, and the difference in each, okay? So we're going to start with the easy stuff, um, base gel and top coat. If you're using gel polish, you definitely want to start with base gel so it doesn't turn out streaky. Um, it gives it something to stick to and end with top coat. I prefer no wipe top coat, but if you use regular top coat, just wipe it down with alcohol as soon as it's dry so you don't have that tacky layer. All right, next, files. You're gonna want good buffing blocks because that's what gets rid of all those lumps and bumps and leaves it extra smooth. Um, you can get these in bulk on Amazon, but it really gives it a nice finished look, so make sure you have those. Uh, hand files. Now, Typically, what you're going to find are 100 and 180 grit files, which are for finishing and, and not so much for shaping. Um, they're more for the top, I guess. Uh, the higher the grit, the finer it is. So it'll leave less lines and grooves, but you won't get you won't be able to move a lot of acrylic with it, so it's really just for finishing. Um, these are 80-80 grit files. Um, the higher number means they're extra coarse, and these are really good for shaping. They give you that extra crisp shape and even lines because to move the acrylic, you don't have to push as hard, which means that your file doesn't flex, so you're able to keep it straighter while you're filing. With the 100, 180 ones, you have to push harder to move the acrylic, which makes it flex and messes with your shape. Um, next, your clippers. Okay, so these are for tips to get them straight across. Um, don't try to use this on acrylic. Uh, you can, but it's going to break it and crack the acrylic, and it's, it's more for, for tips only. Um, so you can get all the way down to the nail and get that nice even line. Uh, these are straight edge clippers. I don't know if you can... So if you look closely, they're completely straight across the edge so that when you're clipping you don't get that moon shape that they usually have. So invest in a pair of those. Um, next, this is a wax pen and dotting tool, but this is for picking up gems so that you're not trying to pick them up with tweezers or your hands, you just push it onto the top of the gem, and then when you touch something that's tacky, it'll release. Uh, dotting tool. I think we all know what that is, but if not, um, it's for making lines or dots. You pick up polish with the end of it. You can, yeah, you can basically use it to make any shape. Cuticle tools. Um, these are both cuticle pushers. Um, the, the only difference is these are disposable, so if you're taking clients, you want to have these. Um, these are obviously not disposable. If you're going to use these, they need to be sanitized in between each and every client. Tweezers, pickers, whatever you want to call them. Um, you can use these for decals, uh, gems, whatever. Have a pair of them on hand, though, because you don't want to be trying to pick up gems and, and whatnot out of a bin of them with your fingers. This is for use with this and this. So these are soak off clips. You take a cotton ball and soak it in soak off solution. Um, I know a lot of people use acetone, but that's really hard on your hands. So this is really what you should be using with that. You just soak a cotton ball in it, put it in the top of the clip here, and then put the, the cotton ball on top of your finger and you leave that on there and it helps soften the acrylic. And this, after it softens the acrylic, you take this and scrape it off. And that helps get all that acrylic off once it's soft. Don't try to use that before it's soft or you're going to hurt yourself. Okay, these are pinchers. If you're using forms like these, when you lay the acrylic down, uh, as it dries, you want to put this on the edges to hold it. That way the forms don't flatten out and it doesn't spread because then it helps avoid that what that width at the end of the nail and these hold it and give it that nice narrow shape while it dries 
Okay. Speaking of forms, here are your options for applying acrylic. So we have the forms. Um, I'll go over this later in application. Um, you can use paper forms. You definitely you want to fold them before you put them on. And you just push them underneath the natural nail. And then stick them around. And then you lay the acrylic on top of that. And this is where the pinchers come in. When you put the acrylic on as it dries, you just grab it on the side of the finger and it keeps it flush with the side of your finger so the paper doesn't push as the acrylic dries. Okay, you also have, I see a lot of people making the mistake and ordering these kind of tips, um, not knowing that there is a difference. I made that mistake, which is why I have this box. Um, these are full cover tips, or full cover fake nails, whatever. These are half cover. Half cover, full cover. The difference is these go on the tip of your nail, like so. These cover the entire nail. These are mostly used for press-ons. Now, if you accidentally order these and you're in a pinch, you can either cut enough off that you can use it as a tip or use it as a tip anyway. Just make sure you file the sides. But these are only for press-ons, so if you're like searching for them on Amazon, make sure you put in half cover, that they say half cover, otherwise you're going to get press-ons. Like I said, I've actually done it twice. I'm ashamed of it, but whatever. <clears throat> Next, we are going to talk about brushes. And the reason I have 50 million brushes here is because I have accidentally ordered the wrong brush about 50 different times. And the reason I want to show you all these is because I want to show you the difference in what you're looking for. So, these are both number 10 brushes. I don't know if you can see the difference. There's quite a big difference in the head of them. Now, it just depends on where you get them. They're always going to, like, you really got to take the time to look because... I wouldn't think that this one was a number 10. That's ridiculous. And this is actually a little big. These are all number eights. Slightly smaller than this, but would you be able to tell the difference in these two brushes? No, I couldn't. Um, so these are all number eights. I don't know if you can see the difference in that. Now typically what I've found is the metal handled brushes like these tend to be a lot smaller on the head of the brush. I'm not sure why, that's just been what I've found. Um, I usually go with a wooden handled brush for whatever reason they tend to hold up better. They're usually better quality. That's not 100%, but that's what i found. These are both number 12s. Big difference in, in size there too. However, and the reason I'm showing you this one is because this one claimed to be a sable brush and it was not. It was nylon. And the way you can tell is because the bristles don't bend the same way. Um, they're very stiff. Like you can see how the sable brush just is really soft. And the nylon brush is not. It, the bristles don't come apart as easy, and they're very stiff, whereas the sable feels like fur. It should feel like fur. It should not feel like a paintbrush. Okay, now we have art brushes. This is for builder gel, or poly gel, what have you. You also have... But these ones can be cleaned in alcohol between applications of gel and to clean it while you're, while you're using it. But typically when you see a brush that looks like this, it is for builder gel. These are art brushes. They're used for the fine lines. This one can be used for ombre or 
really any pattern. Do whatever you want with it. Those are just, you know, for whatever you want to do. All right. These are lint-free wipes. I use these for acetone uh, when you're, or wipe off solution after you use gel polish. If you have that tacky layer, you put these in alcohol and you wipe it and it doesn't leave lint behind. So you wanna make sure you look for lint-free wipes, um, not like cotton balls or anything because they tend to leave a lot, of, a lot of stuff behind on the nail. I also use these before I put on top coat to smooth out any grooves or layers any grooves or lines that were left behind with the files. Now, bits, drill bits, because I see a lot of confusion about this. So, here's your drill, it's your best friend. Um, these are the bits that typically come with your drill. Um, these are not really acrylic bits. I mean, they are, but they're not really for moving acrylic. So. Um, they're more for finishing and you have some coarser grit like these and then you have some finer ones like these but these are really for finishing and smoothing um, they're, they don't move acrylic very fast uh, this is just a brush I have no idea I've never used it um, there's a lot of stuff that came with that I haven't used um, but if you are using these this is more to cover the entire surface, um, and these are for detail work to get in around the sides or for smaller nails, like if you're using them on your natural nail. Uh, these are your sanding bands. Your drill, or actually the, the finishing set, will come with a mandrel bit that looks like this, and that is what your sanding band goes on. Now, the sanding bands also come in different grits, um, higher and lower, you get whichever one, you know, whichever you prefer. Um, I just use whatever comes with it. Now, these are the, I guess you would call, I guess, aftermarket bits that I got when I realized the ones that came with my drill were no good to me. Um, this is your cuticle bit. Typically doesn't come with the finishing set. Not sure why, you really need it. Um, this is for creating that seal around the cuticle to help prevent lifting and for getting any dead skin dead skin off of your nail um, which can cause lifting as well so that can actually be applied directly to the cuticle don't leave it sit for too long or it'll burn you but it gets it's kind of a safety bit and you just it takes all that dead skin off and you can see I'm putting it right on my skin. As long as it's not at a high RPM, it won't hurt you. Just keep it moving. Okay. Now we have, let's see, what else do we have? This, I don't even know what it's called, but it is one of my favorites. Um, I use this one kind of like a cuticle bit but it's really good for pedicures because at that point, um, you can really get all the way down in those creases and it helps lift the cuticle away. Um, it's also really good for this space right here when you're finishing because it's got that nice curve on it so it, it gives you that nice bump right near your cuticle. This is one of my favorites. I use it absolutely every time. Um, it really gets all the way down in there. You don't want to leave it sit too long because it will drill straight through. This one is also good for piercing. If you want to use nail jewelry, this is the one I use. You just go at it from the top and the bottom and it will give you a nice really small hole. Then these, um, these ones I don't know exactly what they're for. Um, I tend to use them when I'm trying to get down in between when I have acrylic on and I'm trying to get down underneath that line right there. Right. Now these are these are the important ones. These are the ones you need. See the the how coarse they are? These are the ones that move acrylic quickly. Um, this one it helps you get that you can get down into smaller spaces with it. Um, I especially like using it right up around the cuticle. 
um, because it gives you that nice curve. This is just a barrel, you know, it's for moving acrylic quickly, um, but it's a safety bit. If you look at the top, how it has that smooth, smooth surface, that's a safety bit. So if it touches, it's not going to hurt you. Don't leave it on too long or it'll burn, but it can touch briefly without hurting you. This one does not have that and it will tear your finger off. So be very careful. Now, make sure that you are cleaning your bits after you get acrylic in them and sanitizing them in between each person that you use them on. Um, you can clean them with acetone and a nail brush like this. Just make sure you rinse them afterwards because a lot of times you're going to get acrylic or poly gel or whatever um, down in these teeth. So you want to make sure that you're sanitizing them in, in alcohol between each person and cleaning them in between to get any residue out. Um, if they get clogged up, just soak them. I either soak them in soak off solution or acetone for an hour because they're steel. It's not really going to hurt them to be in there briefly and then rinse them off um, and obviously clean them with alcohol. Also, as far as your files, you do not want to reuse your files. Um, I do for practice, but you don't want to use a disposable file from one person to the next. It, it can really transfer infection really easily, um, and a lot of people have microscopic cuts in their cuticles and don't even know it. Also, before you use a new file on someone, you want to kiss your file. You want to take another file and run it along the edge. See that edge right here? Run it up and down the file. Just like you're sharpening a knife, because this can be really sharp and when you go to run it on somebody's finger, you will slice them open. So make sure you kiss the edge of that file with another one. Um, I think, I think we've about covered it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thank you.